Greetings, and welcome back to Room 303 in our talks with Walt, as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We're in the Calamus section, and we turn now to a pretty obscure poem. Not a lot even said or written about this little poem, Roots and Leaves themselves alone. It's a strange kind of title, and as we said, Whitman loves to play this game with syntax and word order to kind of make you go, wait, what did I just read here? Um, Norton's will give us a little bit of background information on this one. Um, Whitman improved the 1867 text of this Calamus number 13 poem by dropping the first two lines and the last three from the poem. The opening lines of the 1860 text read, Calamus taste and then parentheses, for I must, ch I must change the strain, dash, there are not to be pensive leaves, but leaves of joy, in parenthetic. And uh, the original manuscript title was actually Buds, which will appear here. Let's just read this little poem. It's all about growth. We're going to see that the word roots is obviously a very popular one in uh, leaves of grass, right? Now our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side, Talks with Walt, and you've been following our stuff since the inscriptions on. Um, you'll maybe remember the word roots gets used a number of times uh, in inscriptions in Song of Myself four times and Children of Adam once, but are you ready for this? In the Calamus section, the word roots gets used seven times. The leaves, of course, in the inscriptions as well as in uh, Song of Myself gets used at least ten times. In the Calamus section, though, the word leaves gets used twenty times. So in many ways, this little poem can kind of sit as one of the representatives of the Calamus section. He says it this way. Roots and leaves themselves alone are these, scents brought to men and women from the wild woods and pond side, breasts sorrel and pinks of love, fingers that wind around tighter than vines, gushes from the throats of birds hid in the foliage of trees as the sun is risen, breezes of land and love sent from living shores to you on the living sea, to you, O oh, sailors. Frost mellowed berries and the third month twigs offered fresh to young persons wandering out in the fields when the winter breaks up. Love buds put before you and within you, whoever you are, buds to be unfolded on the old terms. If you bring the warmth of the sun to them, they will open and bring form, color, perfume to you. If you become the ailment and the wet, they will become flowers, fruits, tall branches, and trees. Now, for those of you who are hearing this, and you've been with me throughout the entire readings from the beginning with inscriptions, you're like, there are so many echoes here of things I've heard before. Remember, even when he talked about the perfume of armpits in Song of Myself, we're playing very similar kinds of echo games here. Notice, he begins with roots and leaves themselves alone are these. These what? Obviously, the songs, the poems of Leaves of Grass. Since brought to men and women from the wild woods, we cannot help but think of Thoreau here, and Pondside, and then of course from Song of Myself, Passage 5, we're back to breasts again, breasts, sorrel, and pinks of love, obviously there's some potential sexual language here as well, fingers that wind around tighter than vines, right, so we've got this bringing together of the human and the natural, right? Gushes from the throats of birds, we've heard a lot about birds up to this point, hid in the foliage of trees as the sun is risen. Breezes obviously wind is so important in our reading of these of grass, of land and love sent from living shores, and then finally it is, to you. And again, just like our previous poem, Are You the New Person Drawn Toward Me? And a number of times already we've seen this in Leaves of Grass where he literally reaches out and speaks directly to you, the reader, and he will call you what as a reader? A sailor. A sailor. And it will make us think about Keats's Much have I traveled in the realms of gold and many goodly states and kingdoms seen upon first looking into Chapman's Homer. To be a great reader is to be a great traveler. Right? And we've heard this all the way from the very beginning of our time together as we talked about the Iliad, the Odyssey, and the Aeneid, no question. Met frost mellowed berries, third month twigs, obviously we're talking spring now, offered fresh to young persons wandering out in the fields when the winter breaks up. Here, notice it's a young person and not a child of Song of Myself, Passage 6, but nonetheless, Leaves of Grass is written for the young. Obviously, we the old can enjoy it, but it's the young, right? Who do what? Well, they go off and take walks for themselves out in the middle of the woods, right? When finally winter breaks up, right? Love buds, that is to say the original title is buds, right? Put before you and within you whoever you are. In other words, each one of these poems is like a seed. It's a fascinating way to read these poems. And it's as if Whitman is planting them inside of you to see what can be produced, what can grow. Obviously, growth is about everything in regards to leaves of grass. Buds to be unfolded 
on the old terms. Now, there's all kinds of echoes here from the inscriptions poems. You can go back and see the ways in which that's happening, right? Unfolded is a wonderful verb here for us, right? If you bring the warmth of the sun to them, in other words, growth is dependent not just upon Whitman planting the seeds, but you nurturing those. If you bring the warmth of the sun to them, they will open and bring form color perfume to you. Now, this is Whitman in some, I think, is his best, right? Where he uses the word form, and he talks about the sun. And, of course, those are the echoes of uh, uh, Plato's Republic, especially in Book 7 in the Cave Allegory. Remember, when the young student is brought out of the cave into the light of the sun, he's blinded by the light, as we say in our lectures on this topic. But notice here it is. You've got to have some sun, that is to say, some intentionality, some inspiration, that helps to grow whatever these buds these poems are going to perform for you. Form, color, perfume. We mentioned perfume in armpits from earlier echoes, right? If, notice it's a, it's a repetition of this if, if you twice, right? If you become the ailment and the wet, that is to say, you nurture whatever these seeds are, they will become flowers, fruits, tall branches and trees. And immediately, of course, we think about Thoreau and his love of trees. Later in A Song of the Open Road, we're going to hear Whitman waxing about the most amazing trees you walk under and they're kind of like being with certain people in your life. Well, what's the, what's the real message of a poem like this? Well, all great artists are really about growth. I mean, think about our study of the Divine Comedy in Dante, right? Everything is about movement, growth, trying to learn something by the end of it all. And obviously, Dante, very influential in his writing of these poems. At to be, notice all the sensual language here, overrelated to the senses, what you can smell, what you can touch, etc. At 3a, I've mentioned Thoreau. How about Wordsworth in Ten Turn Abbey? That, he says, I am still a lover of the woods. No, no, no doubt changed from what I was when first I came among them. That idea that when you're young, you get to enjoy the woods, and we sense, sense this here in this set of lines as well. Finally, I think it's an easy question to ask at 3B to own a poem like this. To what degree are you ready to say that you are growing? And to what degree are you bringing the sun, the ailments, and the wet to your reading of these poems so that they actually matter to you in some way? That is to say, can you grow into a tree? Can you become that powerful oak given the roots that you're creating right now as you do a study like this? I hope that our study is providing you with roots and, of course, a few leaves as well. Thank you.